Hi, my name is Adiola. I'm the Executive Director of Youth in Action. And um, we're honored to be here to talk about the article um, that we submitted for Annenberg's next issue of View. Um, we wanted to make sure that we added youth voice in this article, and so we focused on the power of young people in social change efforts. Um, right here next to me is Christopher Castro. He's um, one of our board co-chairs at Youth in Action. Um, I also have Marley right next to me. She's another board co-chair um, and a great leader, both great youth leaders at Youth in Action. And then we have one of our wonderful alum, um, Buki, who um, was instrumental in the Free Minds for People Conference. Um, she also was a coordinator of our health education team and did a number of different things before she moved on to college. So thank you all for being here with me. Thank you. Good. So we were talking about the quote that nothing about us without us is for us. And that quote hits us at home because like at school, you can make a decision on how, what you're going to be taught, like what you're going to be learning and how they're supposed to like mold you. But at school, it's not, they're not the ones being taught. Like they're not the student. And that's why I just feel like we need to be at the center of social change. Like you can't tell a student like with the, while we have our wife receive transportation campaign, you're telling students that they can't get bus passes, but we are the ones that need it to get to school. For me, it's like if you want to excel and if you want me to do well in school and if you want me to become a future leader, how is it that you're going to impose certain rules or certain laws that have no bearing on what I actually do or in fact negatively impact me? The thing is, if you're going to in institute something or tell me to do something, it needs to be good for myself and good for my surroundings and, and it needs to be evaluated that way, not because it's best in your eyes, but because it's best in ours, because we are the people who will be replacing you eventually and taking on your position as a leader in the community. And I think in addition to that, um, a lot of these policymakers, they aren't in our place and they've never really walked in our shoes and know what we've been through. and the way we get to school or what we do at school. Their children are in the public school systems. Um, going to college, like I realized that a lot of other kids had more of an advantage than I did. And I graduated salutatorian, so I thought, oh my God, I'm so smart. And just th little things like bus passes and not being able to access the little amount of education that you're given is a big issue and like it does kind of affect just the whole general education system. Absolutely. I mean, we talk a lot of, at Youth in Action about how young people need to be co-constructors of their environment um, as opposed to passive consumers and that's how you all are seen. And so we spend a lot of time trying to create opportunities and space in um, our neighborhood to make sure that that's not the case because we know that not only are you experiencing the issues firsthand, but you often have the best ideas on how to fix the problem. And so um, that's why we think it's so critical to make sure that whether it's just a community program that we're creating or it's a policy that we're trying to influence or you know, a community of people that we're trying to help understand why we do what we do, we have to make sure that you're at the forefront um, and that you're really helping us to make the decisions that we need to make and that are so important. When we had the conversation with Commissioner Jis, it just made you feel involved. Like it made you feel like you're a part of something, because the decision about changing diplomas, about the graduation requirements, that affects all of us. And you're making like that goes back to the quote. Like you're making a decision for something that isn't about you. Like you're not the one who's graduating. You're not the one who is affected by this. Mm -hmm. And when we sat down with Commissioner Jis and like we talked about it after, like it made me feel good about myself. Like it made me feel like we like it's starting to change slowly, but it's happening and. That meant something to me. Uh, in addition to a number of different programs that we've led in the community over the years, um, we've also been able to bring people together in really cool ways recently. So one of the um, biggest ways that we've been able to do that is um, just recently, Free Minds for People, um, one of the focuses of this article. And um, that's been really powerful just to be a part of the community um, of people from across the country who came to Providence um, to talk about education for liberation and some of the social justice issues connected to education in urban communities primarily. 
um, that was a huge honor. But also, I think it was groundbreaking for Providence because um, as a city, we don't talk about those issues in the ways that we should. Um, as a city, we're far behind a lot of, of other um, cities uh, with just trying to be creative about what happens in the classroom. And so it was a big deal for Providence teachers in particular to be in the company of so many you know, energetic people who have these great ideas on how we can change youth adult partnerships in schools and, and, and just be better at, at educating each other. Um, so that was one big thing that I think was a success for us. I know a couple of things that Youth in Action has definitely helped me with, like, has definitely had the most impact with me was with the whole health reform on us trying to change the way Providence looks at teen pregnancy and trying to reduce the number. I did my junior research project on this, and my teacher actually went to Free Minds, Free People, mm -hmm. and she saw that um, we, she saw, she saw that I was there, and then I was in her class, and she was like, oh, you're from Free Minds, Free People. And then I did my project, and I told uh, my applied learning how to do thin action, and we talked about Yeah Team, how it's the team that they created their own they created their own curriculum. The health department certified the curriculum, and then they go out into schools and have after school sessions and week longs, and they teach the students themselves. And that was a really big part of my um, applied learning because it was trying to show my school that I bought that we can make change. Like I bought my. Um, proclamation poster. It was a poster filled with um, condoms, like colored condoms, and it had a little piece of construction paper and my, ab my abstract questions and my thesis statement. I walked into school and got in trouble because of that poster, because it had condoms on it. And I was like, this is the exact point I'm trying to make. You need to understand that you banning condoms and not allowing students to talk about this is causing them to go behind you're behind closed doors and do things without the prior knowledge that they need, without like the proper tools. Like I use an action we teach you. It is okay to have sex. It's fine to have sex. Like everyone's gonna do it at some point. Just know the consequences and what you should do if you do start having sex. Definitely. And I think like um, aside from youth in actions external um, effects, every youth that attends youth in action always has some type of effect through youth in action. For example, um, like when I started my college career, like I wanted to be a bio major because like, oh, I like medicine and I'm good at biology. And then I realized that you can be good at something, but then you can love something more and still be good at it. So now I'm a poli sci major and a bio minor. And my reason for trying to get this internship um, at the State House this summer was mainly because I wanted to work with the policymakers and I felt like I had such a passion because of Youth in Action to make a change in anything in any way that I could. And I knew that just putting myself in it first and foremost was the first step to take to actually making a change and trying to get other people to convert and think about what really goes on in our community here. Yeah. What you just said reminds me of the fact that we created um, with a few other youth organizations in the community a Providence Youth Bill of Rights. Mm -hmm. And um, that was a topic at the conference that people wanted to know about. You know, how did we create our Bill of Rights? And you know, we had some really great community partners, PRISM, DARE, Young Voices, to do that um, through the Youth for Change Alliance. And that was huge, and you were part of that work, which was yeah. pretty powerful, right? I mean, would you, would you add that as a success of ours? I think that is a success. Um, I was just talking to Sterling when I came to Youth in Action yesterday, and she was telling me that the bus passes um, are on the way of actually being um, given to the students um and that made me really excited because i mean like i was part of the whole um process of trying to get this to happen but to actually hear that it's happening i mean she said it has to be on paper soon mm -hmm. um for it to be legitimate but to actually feel and hear that something you worked so hard for could possibly be a reality was like a big achievement for me even though I wasn't here mm -hmm. to be in the ending process of it. And spanning off of what you were saying, it's definitely important and a success to myself in putting yourself in an environment that you're not used to in order to make a change, like speaking to Lincoln Chafee's wife 
and going to teach at Roger Williams and having an impact on the future teachers and what our new education system is going to look like eventually at one point is something that I find empowering and so amazing at the fact that you can sit there and we can put our foot forward as youth in this concept in a world that they said that youth are too young and too inexperienced to be able to do things of this magnitude and be able to convince others of our intelligence and to actually make a change and see that change come through. The, that's one thing I've noticed with Youth in Action is that all of us have been there like to start like we were like the root of the change but we, the change didn't happen when we like when we were still working on the assignment like for Yetim when Yetim was trying to implement trying to get into other places besides week longs I was there trying to help with that going to um, healthy kids of Rhode Island meetings and doing a whole bunch of behind the scenes work and now to find out that after I transition off the team and then they're doing all this amazing work they're going to teach at um, a school and they go to they've been to the Met they've been to Adelaide like they've gone to so many places and you just see like it's like your baby has grown up and taken its own flight and it's doing what they need to do and you just feel like you've done you did your job and you're just handing it off to them and I feel like with Youth in Action like the policymakers in Providence need to just get this through their head. Like, we're never going to go away. <laughs> we're always going to have new generations. I mean, like, I branched off Youth in Action. Chris is branching off. Marley's branching off. But there's always going to be a group of new people who just want to make a change. And because we feed off this fantastic energy of just social, social change and just wanting to get what we deserve, like, we're never going to go away, and I feel like they need to just get with it and understand, like, you can't win. It's not going to happen. 